The most ridiculous thing that has ever happened in 2018 so far was the March for Our Lives movement. It never solved anything. Just a bunch of young kids crying and demanding more gun control. When that in itself has never solved any problem whatsoever. The whole premise of gun control was to decrease gun violence. But it actually increased it, statistically speaking. And I'm not just saying this from a statistical standpoint, but this is also a historical standpoint. So my question is, why are people still protesting and uh, demanding stricter gun control laws when it has never worked, especially in states like Chicago? Gun violence has actually increased a whole lot more. And last I checked, gun violence all throughout the nation has actually decreased by more than 50% since 1991 so and that's a statistical fact right there I mean what I don't understand is after all these years people are still protesting and they haven't learned that it hasn't solved anything there's no point in the whole thing the first responder the sheriff in Parkland Florida was on the scene I mean he wasn't I mean he wasn't actually there he didn't put a stop to the sus to the mass shooter like he should have but he was the first responder in front of the, the school when the, when the mass shooting was happening. And he was just inside his car. And after several minutes, the guy was still shooting, what, more than 20 innocent children? Not as students, as well as teachers? So, and he had the audacity to speak out and slam the NRA spokeswoman. When he was the one who should be seen as the... He, when he was really the guilty one for not doing anything to save the lives of those children and people aren't protesting the FBI and the police at all whatsoever because they had a lot of information which could have served as a motive for probable cause to arrest the young mass shooter who killed all those innocent victims in Parkland Florida so why isn't that the case they had all the information on him that to me doesn't make any sense. Now here's the thing. If there was a, a, a good, a, a, a law-abiding citizen with a concealed carry, and if he was present in that moment, he could have put a stop, stop to that mass shooter in a heartbeat. Just look at the, the mass shooting that, was, that happened in Maryland. A law-abiding citizen with a concealed carry took out his gun and actually shot the mass shooter before he shot it, before he had a chance to kill anybody. How many people died then? Zero people. Concealed carry, it has been proven according to studies and statistics, it decreases rape by 49%, thefts, thefts and muggings by 35%, murders by 39%. The list goes on and on and on. Need I say more? I think not. So the whole thing with uh, March for Our Lives, my opinion on the March for Our Lives movement, it was nothing more than a joke and a debacle of a fiasco. I mean, what, what, what is this? You're protesting to have this and these, these kids, the, the, especially the, ma the two main figureheads of the March for Our Lives movement, especially that young 17-year-old boy who claimed that he was there on the scene as a witness, but the first time he said anything about it, he said that he was, he was riding his bicycle, going, you know, speeding up on his bicycle to school, three miles away from school. He, he was riding his bicycle from home, and he was three miles away from the school, and he wanted to show up on the scene, and, and he wanted to know what was going on, and, and he heard about it, and he was concerned. But then he changed the narrative and claimed that he was there when he was never even there in the first place. And that... And that other girl, who was the second other figurehead of the Mar March for Our Lives movement, she claimed that um, that a, you give a good guy with a gun to stop a bad guy, we call BS. She has actually defied the laws of common sense and logic itself. Most of these people in March for Our Lives, 99% of them were brain dead and uneducated kids. And there's only one kid, one person in the whole thing who, who happened to be a witness of the mass shooting. He's the only one that actually 
used had enough common sense to say that gun control is not the answer. Because we need the Second Amendment right to defend ourselves, to save our own lives. But all these Americans who keep protesting and demanding uh, stricter gun control laws, these guys, these people are pretty much insinuating that they are they're pretty much demanding the government to take away their rights that to me doesn't make any sense it never made any sense to me there's no logic behind all that you make these kind of demands you're a fool so it's just like what benjamin franklin said he who is going to uh sacrifice liberty uh for security shall nor deserve neither this is the case today. So the NRA should not be blamed. And the guns shouldn't be blamed either. And none of the mass shooters were members of the NRA, last I checked. So if anyone should be to blame, it should be the FBI and the police departments. Because in, in all of these narratives, either the persons are psychotropic drugs, a radical um, uh, Islam supporter, or whatever it is, or who praises ISIS, as well as... You know, the fact that the FBI and the police have a lot of information on them, but they don't, but in, despite the fact they usually have information and they see the red flags, they never do anything to stop it. It's the same narrative with almost every mass shooter story. And the, and the mass shooter is always sympathized, and there is always sympathy towards mass shooters in the mainstream media. media. And, they, and, they, and, they, and, they, and, they, and the ratings are sky, skyrocket. As a result of sad stories, they want to pull on your heartstrings and they manipulate you by your emotions just so they can get better ratings. And you can't keep believing that. So tell me what you guys think on the comments below. These are my two cents. And I spit out some facts. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it.